let us recall what we did in the previous lecture in the previous lecture we have defined a complete metric space so what is a complete metric space in which the every cosy sequence is convergent and we have seen that what is the difference between a limit point and a limit of a sequence a limit point means it is a limit point of a set of sequence and we have seen that if you have the sequence which will have the infinitely many distinct points in that sequence then the limit point and the limit of the sequence will be a same and with the help of that we have derived one result the result says like this this is a and y is a subset of or a subspace of x then y is closed if and only if y is complete that means a closeness and a completeness is a equivalent quantity under the complete metric space now here we are going to discuss in this lecture is the cantor intersection theorem which is the theorem which you uh, you already studied in your previous semester in r that is intersection of in is a singleton element singleton element x0 where in is a sequence of decreasing intervals so for that i need to define one definition it's called the decreasing sequence of set so let us try to give this definition a sequence of sets that is en if i define of a subset of a metric space it's called decreasing sequence if a1 is a subset of a2 will be a subset of sorry a1 is a superset of a2 a2 is a superset of a3 and so on now let us state what is this cantor intersection theorem is so for that we required first of all x be a complete metric space what you have studied in your previous semester you have studied this theorem on a real line a real line is complete so that's why that that result is a particular case of this result so we are saying that x is a complete metric space and let the sequence fn be a decreasing sequence of non empty closed set and all of them are subset of x each fn 
or subset of x such that the diameter of this each fn will tends to zero as n tends to infinity we already defined what do you mean by diameter a diameter of a set a is the supremum of a distance between any two point in this set a so it will be defined like this the diameter and this diameter is tending to zero as n tends to infinity then we have to prove that the intersection of this each fn contains a one point let's say it is x i can say it contains only one point so as we have discussed that is in the previous lecture also the previous uh, particular case of this one if you consider your fns as this minus 1 by n to 1 by n as an interval your x i'm considering as r which is a complete matrix space and fns are this which is a decreasing sequence of so each the sequence is a decreasing sequence of non empty subset of x and all of them are closed also and hence we know that the intersection of all this fns is the singleton zero which always contains exactly one point and it is exactly in this case in this particular case is the singleton point so to prove this statement the previous statement that is this cantor intersection theorem will first prove that this intersection is a non empty that means if it is a decreasing sequence and if the diameter is tending to zero as n tends to infinity then this intersection will be non empty so that is our first objective is to prove we shall prove that f which is intersection of 1 to infinity fn is a non empty set this is our objective the first objective so let the xn be a point in fn so there is fn and i'm taking one point in this fn so what is happening and for each n we are doing this so for f1 we have one point x there is inside there is another set because it is a decreasing sequence f2 that is another point x2 and so on okay so in that manner we are taking this xn is a point in fn for each n since the distance or this diameter of fn is zero tending to zero as n tends to infinity as per the definition what we can say is a supremum of distance between a1 a2 where a1 a2 is belongs to f this will tends to zero as n tends to infinity and this each xn is an fn that also we have both this statement will implies that if i have another point here xm then 
a distance between this xn and xm will tends to zero as m and n both tend to infinity due to the supremum is tending to zero supremum is tending to zero so in particular this is also tends to zero as n and n m tends to infinity will have so what is this gives this will gives this xn this is a cosy sequence in fn so therefore we can say that this xn is a cosy sequence in fn but what is fn fn is a closed subset of a complete matrix space that is our theorem says this theorem says that this fn's are closed sets and each fn is a subset of x and x is a complete space so by previous result that we have here deal that x is a complete matrix space then closeness is equivalent to complete space so that's for i can say that this each fn is a complete space and we have a one sequence which is cosy in that space so therefore we can say that this xn is a converse to a point x in fn this is because of the result that we know that x is complete and f is a subset of x then f is closed if and only f is complete and under the complete matrix space every cosy sequence is converged so that's why this sequence xn is converged now what is our objective we have to show that this x is actually in capital f that means i want to prove that this x is contained in each of this fn so it is sufficient to prove that x is belongs to fn for any fixed arbitrary number n so we have we can prove this is for any fixed number n 0 for this this xn has to be into this fn x 0 for any fixed arbitrary n0 now there will be two cases here the first case is if xn contains only finitely many points and xn is converged to x so as also we have discussed the this result when we can say that limit point and limit is same in that case we are also applying the same situation here if xn is a finitely limit many limit points is there that means this x is repeating and xn is converged to x so this x is repeating infinitely many times in this sequence xn and so that a limit point will be a same as so we can say that in the sort in sort what we can say is therefore x is a repeated 
infinitely many times. in this sequence xn therefore x is belongs to fn n0 another situation is this f xn contains only sorry there are infinitely many distinct point in that so if this xn has infinitely many distinct points therefore x is a limit point of the set this so therefore we can say that x is a limit point of all xn which are bigger than n zero also so therefore we can say that if x is a limit point of fn zero due to the same argument as i have said that limit point and the limit is same because of that result but fn0 is a closed set so its limit point has to be in that inside that set x is belongs to fn0 for every n0 that means x is belongs to f which is the nothing but the intersection of each that's it. so that means we can say that f is non empty now we have to prove that it has only contains one point let us say it has let x and y both of them is in f and x and y is not same this will gives you x and y is in each fn because f is the intersection of intersection of this each fn but what is happen the distance or this diameter of fn is tends to zero as n tends to infinity and this statement is true for any n since the diameter is a supremum so in particular the distance between this two also tends to zero as n tends to infinity it will not depends on n so that's why i can say that x is equal to y so hence we can say that this intersection contains only one point and therefore we can say that f contains only one point so which completes the proof of cantor intersection here if you have any doubt you can ask